Hey everyone, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. Let's just get right into it today because we are joined by the one, the only Dr. Contessa. Hi, how are you? What is going on? Tell me everything. How's life in Atlanta today? Everything is beautiful, just like the sun is shining, but family is great. God is great. Business is doing wonderful. And so happy that our show is coming back on July the 10th. I yay, mean, married yay, married to medicine. I mean, did you <laughs> think when you joined all these seasons ago that you would be here season nine? <laughs> I didn't. I think. I mean, I literally just like put my head down and like dove in. I had no idea what was going to happen. Um, I didn't know. I mean, I felt like, you know, I always tease on Michelle and Destiny's child. Like I'm late to the, you know, I'm like not an original cast member, but I'm happy to be here, you know, <laughs> and I'm doing my best to like give it 100% every single time I'm up there. So that's what I, that's me. Well, listen, honey, if you have to be anyone from Destiny's Child, like that ain't a bad thing now, is it? That's not, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's my girl. And I'm happy to be here. And that's kind of how I approached it. Like, you know, if I can bring like an authentic voice to the show and I can offer something different than what other the other wonderful women are given, then I'm I'm all in, you know, as long as I get to be myself, I'm happy. <laughs> how is this season, season nine different for you? Oh man, I think season nine was tough. Like I'm a girl's girl, right? And I've always, I mean, I was in the Miss Missouri pageant. I was Miss Congeniality. I was homecoming queen. You know, I just have always gotten along really, really well with women. And I'm a like a cheerleader, like a natural cheerleader. And so conflict, if you've seen like the previews or even like, you know, episode one, it was just tough. I was really like kind of racking my brain you know, to figure out what it is I could do to kind of make our friendships and relationships better. But I also by, I still needed to like preserve myself. I needed to put on, you know, my own oxygen mask. And it was tough because some people are not great friends all the time. And so you, you know, it was just, it was tough to deal with because I just always give people like 1000%. And so when someone breaks my heart, I'm fully, my heart is fully broken. <laughs> so yeah. It's like you said, like season, I mean, episode one, like right out of the gate, we are starting strong this season yeah. nine. I mean, the last time we saw you personally, like, you know, in New York at the reunion, we will we'll say New York, cause that's how we'd like to refer to it. Yes. So last time we saw you in New York, I mean, you know, we, we learn, you know, your marriage was going through some troubles and we even learn in the first episode, you know, it really went there. Like you talk about, you know, you were on the verge of divorce and selling your house and, you know, how does one come back from that? Yeah, so we, we engaged a counselor and one thing that they recommended was, you know, he was wonderful and he still is wonderful. He recommended, you know, to put things on pause, right? Let's just give it a second. Like we honestly could say that we had not really given marriage counseling 100% because my husband, of course, stopped quitting. He always quit every time. He never would continue in the therapy. And it's not, all his fault. And that was another thing that the therapist kind of was saying. Um, I know for me, one of my, you know, horrible things, I have a laser tongue. I would, you know, like a serpent use that divorce word all the time, you know, cause I was a strong woman and I'm independent and I don't need you. And so that sometimes can come across is like, you're not fully committed. And I needed to learn how to like really show that like I'm here you know, even when things get tough, I'm here and I'm willing to work through it. And so that really did help to bo make both of us, not just him, me too, more vulnerable. Like, so we both had to start giving and just committed to like, you know, let's put this on pause for a year and let's see if we're better. And I'll tell you, it hasn't even been a year and we're better. We're a hundred thousand percent better. Wow. Is that why it was different this time? Cause like we've seen you, you know, no shade. Like we've seen you guys go through counseling before in the past on previous seasons. Is that, was that really the difference? I was done. I mean, I think it's sometimes hard to acknowledge what's right in front of you. I am always in my friend groups and things, the voice of reason, but it got to the point where it was like, you know, I'm trying to be reasonable and say, which sounds a little callous. We are so disconnected that we're starting to like resent each other. And let's just, for the sake of having a healthy divorce and co-parenting, we need to like move forward with just 
being divorced. Like, right, you live your life, I live my life. We can be, still be great parents. We're always gonna be a family. And I think that's when he kind of took me seriously. And he was like, oh, wait, wait, she's serious? Like, <laughs> she, she's cool, she's okay with moving on. And I think I used it so many times in the past, he really didn't believe that anything in my head was, you know, I was just talking like that anything needed to change. But putting the house on the market in, for sure was an eye-opening experience because, you know, it was a sign in the yard. And so he just, I think that really did shake him. Wow. How hard was it to like tell your kids? Cause I know, you know, the house is for sale. You have to sit your children down. <laughs> so, so they were shocked and they were, that was kind of one of the things they were like, you know, and we had to stop being dishonest a little bit with them too. Like, you know, it's not about the market is good and we need to move. Like we, you know, we don't have to move because we're probably, and that was my thing. I was like, we'll try to stay in the same neighborhood, but I, you know, I don't want anything to make this hard, right? Trying to hold on to the house, you hold it as your house, my house. Like, I don't want to fight about anything. I was like, let's just dissolve all of our assets and like move forward. And the kids were probably, um, really shaken in the sense of like, this is their normalcy. And what are you talking about? Like this, you're making it seem like living in two houses and being separate and not being one unified family is gonna be okay. And they really did not take it well. And more so, you know, my son, believe it or not, my son took it the worst. And he's wow. normally the one who's pretty zen and, and even kill. Wow, wow. I mean, I think as the season goes on, you are going to hear from, you know, a lot of people in the positive note, you know, like a lot of people don't admit they go to therapy. They don't want to talk about therapy. I mean, I know yeah. we're in 2022, which it has gotten a little better, but I just think you'll hear from a lot of people that are like, you know, thank you for sharing that because we too are going to therapy to try to fix our marriage. God bless you. Yeah. Do you attribute, you know, the show to either, you know, like a lot of couples come on TV and then it, it's either negative, like it affects your marriage or positive in the sense that you sit there and it is like a home movie and you watch and you say like, wow, look at that. Like, I didn't realize I spoke to you that way or vice. Like, do the show either like hinder your marriage or help it? I think it helped us, helped it in the sense of, again, you know, how do you deal with conflict? Are you like a denier and you don't actually deal with it? Or do you like address it head on? On reality television, they don't let you just like not deal with it, right? right? And I think honestly, one of the things that would be probably true about our marriage, if, if we weren't on the show, we would have been divorced because we would not have actually dealt with what was real and even sought authentic like, you know, help. Like we would have just been like, I'm good. You're good. I'm going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And keep it real superficial and surface. Like we're not happy as opposed to like figuring out the fundamental issues, but then kind of me, 